Hello, welcome everyone. Welcome to our latest virtual bridge session, and I'm delighted to be joined by with uh, by by with by with preposition. Choose anyone that you want. Uh, Ali Hasty and Kirsty from uh, Sruck. Sruck. I don't know. Is there a better way to say it? Do it. Do, is Sruck? S -R -U -C. Well, Sruck or S R U C. Yeah. Do you have a preference? Just just for future reference. S R U C. S R U C. Okay. Okay. That's. I'll remember that for the future. Right, excellent. So you're here to talk about um, your approach to remote in, uh, invigilation. And that's, that's certainly a hot topic just now when we're facing the prospect of continued remote teaching and learning. So without further ado, let us know your secrets. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so we, we'll go, go through 15, 20 minutes or so uh, with our initiative with the remote invigilation of examinations of vet nursing degree students with Proctor exam and middle quizzes. I'm Ali Hasty, SRUC's Digital Learning Lead. Kirsty? I'm Kirsty Young, I'm the Department Head of Veterinary and Animal Sciences um, within the faculty. Incidentally, we haven't fully reviewed this initiative. So over the coming weeks, uh, we're going to heavily review this initiative. There is talk possibly of spreading this through SRUC certain curriculum departments, um, which we'll go through. Okay, Kirsty. Um, so the veterinary nursing degree, it's a, a BSE honours in veterinary nursing, is a, a qualification which um, is required to have very kind of strict guidelines. It's strictly um, a uh, kind of governed by the, the Royal College of Veterinary Surgeons um, as it's a qualification that they'll have a, a legal professional status at the end of the, the qualification. So um, previous to the, the coronavirus then all of our exams were on a paper-based system but clearly once the, the lockdown started we, everybody went home um, and we weren't able to, to continue those exams on a paper-based system. The Royal College though however defines that we must have some kind of um, closed book um, restricted exam within every module. So we, we did, there was a, a limit of how flexible we could be in our uh, approach to these assessments. Um, so not only do we have to carry out those exams, but they also required that we had the very stringent security requirements, anything that they could allow um, the, themselves to kind of come in and audit the, those um, exams as well. Um, so we had to look at um, a proctoring service. Now that was something that we'd never as an organisation carried out before. We'd, you know, uh, with our other exams, we've, we've done some kind of across teams or other, um, you know, platforms that we could uh, remote proctor, remote uh, invigilate that way. Um, but we'd never used a proctoring service. But the quantities of students that we had, um, we're talking about kind of 33 students in first year and 25 yeah. in second year. Um, it wasn't physically, or it was, it was maybe possible, but it was really inefficient and, and not very effective to be able to um, just a remote invigilate them across a, a, one of the, the video platforms. So we started to look at a proctoring service um, that would allow us to maintain that security and provide that reassurance to the our accrediting body. Cool. So the team, as in well, teams, the information systems, digital learning, and the vet nursing team made comparisons with invigilation software available on the market. We narrowed the, the software available on the market down to two possible solutions to do review further. The reps from both uh, software companies uh, provided a, and delivered an online demonstration of their solutions. And Proctor exam was chosen for the basic functionality, SRUC's requirements and price. And incidentally, the other system was pretty, pretty vast and awesome, uh, very heavily priced, but the features was, I would say over complex. Uh, but once you, I think once you get over the, the steep learning curve, it'd be an amazing system. So we went with Proctor exam. So how does Proctor exam work? Proctor exam operates via a Google Chrome plugin. So obviously the users need to use Google Chrome to access Proctor exam. Instructions and links to Moodle quizzes are provided via the student's SRUC email account. And we'll go through some of the, the screenshots with the instructions. 
Students undergo an ID verification using their computer's webcam, webcam, which compares the student's face with their photo ID, such as their driving license and their student cards. Through the webcam and microphone, students are recorded throughout the exams, and we recorded all the exams for year one and year two. Through screen sharing, student activity online, including opening of browsers, is recorded. Data is saved and reviewed by Proctor Exam, who flags potential instances of cheating conditions which are set each exam by SREC. Was, was there anything flagged up, Kirsty, if, if I remember rightly? Um, there's general things because of some of the, you know, they had dropouts and that sort of thing. So there's, there's things that were out with the control of the, the student, but they do get flagged up just because it's, it's something within the, that's out with the restrictions that are identified um, by, uh, that were by, uh, identified by SIUC. But yep. then we've got the ability to the review that yeah. and review yep. whether we think that there, there is any kind of grounds yep. to having any kind of misconduct hearing. And there wasn't any uh, that. <laughs> yeah. So lecturers, co-managers can access recordings and individual reports and if required will instigate an investigation through the academic misconduct procedure. So the next phase was communication, collaboration and planning with both the digital learning team and the vet nursing. We use Microsoft Teams for the communication, collaboration, planning. The storing of the, the actual uh, question papers and we also had a quiz planner as well with direct links to the, the created Moodle quizzes. We provided student guidance as well as staff guidance. The staff guidance on Proctor exam was stored within Teams. Uh, we used the student guidance and agreements which were submitted to Moodle. So we had the guidance there on using Proctor exam. The which was really all... good. That, sorry, Ali, I was oh, just you know, mention, right, but, yeah. um, Proctor Exam provided the the um, little YouTube video there, which was really handy for the students to be able to see before they went into the situation what was expected of them, what would what would it all look like, what would it feel like, and it just helped familiarise the students with that process um, and help kind of de-escalate the scariness and stress that yeah. <laughs> they were experiencing through this this procedure. I mean, even paper-based exams can't be nerve-wracking as it is without you know added technology and so on. So yeah. Um, we had a consent form, obviously the exams will be recorded through video, etc. Uh, they downloaded those documents, signed them and uploaded them to Moodle. They also had a checklist for Proctor exam, which they run through, uh, ticked off and again submitted to a Moodle assignment, which was incidentally was not graded. It was just to sort their um, consent form and their checklist. We provided additional support to students and I'm pretty sure um, Kirsty can um, talk more about this. We use Microsoft Teams with students on a Q&A session. Yeah, so we created a, a, several meetings to keep the students up to date in the, all this process because um, there was obviously, from the time that they were in lockdown, we had to, to think about different approaches, get that approved through the various bodies, both internally with our Valdez University and with the Royal College of Veterinary Surgeons. Um, and have that all all approved. So just keeping the students up to date as we went along. And then as soon as um, we identified that we'd had that approval and that we'd gone with this system, it was then having meetings with them just to familiarise themselves with exactly what that process would look like, what yeah. they should expect, um, what the the um, the um, software allowed us to do um, and how it could support them as well. Um, so it just helped them um, understand the, the whole process um, and then we created some just partly some of the the ones were just more revision type quizzes in Moodle um, yeah. and really just an opportunity for them to have a, a Moodle quiz and um, experience the, the kind of login process and the, the verification process through Proctor exam do a, a little bit of um, kind of work through Moodle just so that they understood that whole flow and the whole process mm, before yeah, the the, their exam started. Yeah. Um, support during their exams, there was a, a Proctor exam chat bot and we used uh, Microsoft Teams again from teaching staff during all the exams. We Which is something that we added um, more to because um, after the first exam, they um, 
there was a few, you know, again, just nerves probably on their part, but just a few yeah. um, wrinkles that they, they got a bit nervous about. Um, and sometimes the chat bot would be a, a little bit slower, you know, wasn't that there are known members of staff talking to them and just having um, members of the teaching staff on Teams during the exams available to, to just answer any questions really helped kind of support and give confidence to the students. So that worked really well. Yeah, I think when we review custody, we'll potentially continue with Microsoft Teams to, to support students throughout their, their exams, I would yeah. think. Yeah. Uh, the vet nursing team provided a debrief after the first live exam to resolve any potential issues. One of the key issues that we found was the, there's a timer on the proctor exam software um, and oh, obviously yeah. the timing during Moodle um, and because the timing in the proctor exam starts as soon as they open the exam instructions and um, they then read the exam instructions click on the Moodle link and then obviously actually start their exam That's, time yeah. so there was a little bit of a, a differentiation and um, within the settings that have been set up to um, warn the students when the time was coming to an end but of course the time wasn't really coming to an end with the Moodle exam, it was only the Proctor exam identified that the, that time was coming to an end. So that had caused um, a bit of uh, stress and distress to the students in that first exam. We identified it, identified that the setting could be removed um, within Proctor exam. So they just went with the, the Moodle timing and that certainly really helped the, the next exams. It, it was much more, uh, less stressful after that. Yeah, cool. So staff training. Um, through Proctor Exam and Moodle quizzes. Proctor Exam provided training to the allocated administrators, myself and Kirsty. Uh, Digital Learning team provided training on Moodle quizzes for staff. And incidentally, there's new members of staff in the vet nursing team and they've never used Moodle quizzes. So the Digital Learning team were very proactive in actually developing the Moodle quizzes for them, going through the settings, the timing settings and so on and so forth, and the different question types available. Ongoing support from the digital learning team with Proctor exam and Moodle quizzes. And incidentally, we, the digital learning team, covered all exams through HRC from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. Uh, Monday to Friday. And we also covered weekends as well. So setting up the Proctor exam. So this is the Proctor exam homepage. So you have the administration section, which is obviously you create your Proctor exams. We have the back office, which has the recordings of your exams and the auditor is where you can search for a, a, an individual student. This is the Proctor exam administration panel and we have three options here and we, I think all of them, if I remember right, Krusty, we, we use the record and review. But under the review we're going to do in the next few weeks, I think maybe the live Proctor and maybe the one moving forward. You'll see the open exams on the left hand side there where you can edit your created exams at any time. So this is a new exam. So this is a record and a view settings. So you give the exam name, the first start time, last start time and duration. This is what Kirsty was talking about. It kind of caught us off guard. Um, you can include your mobile camera. Students can upload exam uh, documentation. This is instructions. Oh, yeah. Ali, I should maybe mention um, just in that, that setup, and it's something that we found as we went along. You need to give the students plenty of time to get into the exam. So, that first start yeah. and um, last start time is really key to have quite a, an open amount of time in there. Um, because uh, I think Proctor Exam uh, guided us to, to put about 15 minutes in, and we found that. Most students were fine to get within 15 minutes, but some had issues. Um, so if their internet dropped or um, sometimes the plugin needed to be refreshed um, and re-uploaded, so they would need probably a good half an hour to, to have a window to make sure that they got into, into, the, ex uh, into the verification process with Proctor Exam and into the exam in time. Yeah. So again, that was probably something that we reviewed as we went along that actually we needed a, you know, a, a good half an hour within that, yeah. that start option time. Yeah, it was lessons learned. Yeah. Yeah. So the next uh, panel, we have the instructions for the proctor settings. So we can allow students to use the internet or not, allow materials such as textbooks, calculator and so on. And then further down, we have extra information for the, the proctors and the reviewers. Okay, the instructions for the students, which is sent through uh, their emails. So we 
copied the text from the assessment descriptor and so on, and had the links to directly to the Moodle quizzes. Next stage was to add the students. We used a CSV file, a spreadsheet, to upload the students, which is a couple of clicks, two second procedure, very quick. And we can also add additional information for particular students. So, for example, maybe a student needs to have regular toilet breaks, so we can give that information to the reviewers as well. We didn't use that custody, but next, I think, as a part of the review, we make aware that staff, that, that, that that's available for staff and so on. Yeah, we tend to put it in the general um, comments, whereas it could be easily, more easily go into that individual information. Yeah. Uh, final stage was adding the co-managers, which was the, the, the lecturer and staff. So they'll be able to take, edit the exam and also obviously view the results once the exams were over. So delivering the exams, the Moodle quizzes. So this is the, the front screen to the Moodle quiz with instructions and obviously tells the students uh, when the quiz, the quiz is going to close and how much time limit they have on that particular quiz. We used the essay question types throughout all the, the quizzes. And in some cases, we created templates within the essay question types, where once the student opened up the quiz uh, question, they can uh, answer within the table, for example, as you see in the screen. Once the exams are over, so this is the list of the, the proctor exams, which the staff and ourselves could access at any time. Once you access an exam, you have stats on attendance, comments, and average time. So the comments facility is, I believe it's from the chat bot. Is that right, Kirsty? Yep. Yeah, which you can drill down and see what kind of questions they've been asking. And then obviously the average time with the attended students. Uh, once you get into the proctor exam itself, you can drill down to the student. And here we have a student's recording. So the left-hand side is the screen sharing facility. So it records the student's screen. And it was extremely handy because there was one occasion where Moodle did crash, I'm afraid. Did save their answers, but we could see what the student, exactly what the student was doing. The next panel is the webcam for the student. The next panel is the student's face photo. And the next panel is the ID card and obviously um, analyzes both um, photos. You can see the comments there. You can see a list of the visited pages they made. We did a test, as, as Kirsty mentioned, and it was quite interesting that some of the students were having fun and uh, you can access the exact pages they've, they've um, accessed. You can also download the videos as well. So next stage was marking the quiz questions. There's many ways you can access the students' attempts. For the election staff in this incident, they accessed the Moodle quiz, went through the administration side block and manual grading. And what the, the really neat thing about the Moodle quizzes is you can grade question one. So the lecturer can grade all that question one for all students' attempts. So this is the. Yep. Sorry, I was just going to say, from a, a you know lecture point of view and assessor point of view, that was much easier um, than going per student. Um, the set the setup with the uh, per student means that you get the students' answers all in in one long list. You get the um, the um, a, a question history, which can be quite long if they've gone back and made yeah, beautiful changes. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then yep. you have to then go in, um, there's a, a click at link at the bottom to then go in and grade that, which opens another box. Um, and then once you've closed it, you come back out and then have to scroll through all of those those uh, lists again. Um, whereas the manual grading just had all the answers on a, a screen um, that we could go in and it had all the marking boxes there, um, as Ali's just going to show you. But it was it was much clearer, much more straightforward to, to use that manual grading rather than individual student answers. Yeah. So this is into the, the question. So there's attempt number one for Georgia. And then you can see the comment facility above and then the mark that the lecturer can provide. Uh, 
And some of the quizzes, we actually added guidance for the markers, which is here. And the lecture, the feedback from the lecture said that was extremely handy because there was different lectures marking different quizzes and, and so on and so forth. So they found that quite beneficial. And I think maybe moving forward, we should integrate that throughout all the, the quizzes. Incidentally, students don't see that, that marker uh, guidance there. So where do we go from here? As I mentioned, we're going to review both Proctor exam and Moodle quizzes. And there has been interest from other uh, curriculum departments within SRUC. So once we do the review, we'll make recommendations on both systems and we'll also create a case study and share with SRUC staff and beyond. And that's a whistle tour. That's great, Ali, Kirsty. Um, okay, so after that, I'm sure there are more than a few questions. So I'm just going to move to, to a gallery view. Um, Do you want me to start sharing? Up. Yeah, if you could, yeah. and then we'd, let's just open it up to the room. So does anyone have a question uh, for Lisa, uh, for, for Kirsty or for Ali? I know, I know, I have a few. I, I, I'm interested, first of all, when you, when you were choosing between the two systems, and obviously you said that the other system was more expensive, but had more functionality. Yeah. Was there any functionality that you thought was missing from Proctor exams that you would have wanted to see in there? I think, sorry, Kirsty, I think one of the reasons why we chose Proctor exam, which you've probably seen with the screenshots, it was simple. It was, it was simple and the time limits were against us. I mean, we only had, as I mentioned, we only had two weeks to get Proctor exam going, as well as the online, um, Moodle quizzes and training staff at the same time. Um, incidentally, I can't remember the name of their company. It was a very, very expensive, but the functionality was quite vast. Um, I, I personally, me personally, once I got into Proctor because I'm giving the training, I'm like, wow, this is clear, simple, and it's, it's effective. And it, it definitely did the job. That was certainly my attraction from the two um demos that we got uh, that was it was diff quite difficult for me to as somebody that's not a, a technology person to kind of follow exactly what how the other one was working I think the setup was maybe a bit more complex whereas proctor exam for you know was I'd set up the vast majority of those exams yeah. um, and you, it was straightforward it it was you know I forced you down that route didn't I, <laughs> <You> did. <laughs> <laughs> moving forward with digital learning <laughs> I think, okay. uh, yeah, it, it only took maybe 10 minutes to set up each exam. Yeah, it's fairly easy. It was very quick and simple and, yeah. and easy to review at the back, uh, in the background as well. That's brilliant. Uh, Thomas, um, I think you have a question. Uh, if you want to unmute yourself, feel free to ask. I see you have your hand up. I uh, was just trying to work out how to unmute myself. <laughs> um, so it's Jim Anderson from the University of Glasgow. Really oh. impressed by... <laughs> How, hi, hi Kirsty. How quickly you managed to get this all together, yeah. including doing procurement. That's, that's unheard of. I'm just interested um, in how the system, what the system does. And if I, can I just summarise what I think is happening? So the first one is that it, the student has been recognised through the video camera when they log on to the exam. And then Proctor exam is monitoring the use of their laptop or whatever system they're using in the context of what they do with it so it, it would record websites they visited um, and other activities they've done it's not a lockdown browser it's not preventing them going to other websites it's just telling you where they've been yeah, yeah. and it, it when the the video camera essentially records everything that's behind them but there's no, no idea of what's in front of them is that right you can you can connect your smartphone behind the student Right. So you can have the two-way camera, as obviously their webcam and their laptop, for example, and a smartphone camera as well. What they usually proctor exam with the guidance is they, they scan the room and under the table and so on, make sure nobody's hiding under the table with the ankles. <laughs> uh, but there is facilities there to have the two cameras, one in front, obviously, in your laptop, and one behind you, which could be a smartphone. Okay. I think when we first set up the exams, they were adapting that that system and um, so it wasn't available just at the start of the exams yeah. otherwise we probably would have used it 
Um, but what, as Ali said, what we did do was get the students to do a room sweep and everything beforehand. And actually, you can see really clearly, just as if you were invigilating in real life, you know, what the students are doing, what the, you know, you can kind of see the thought processes and all you that sort of thing. You funny faces when you do them. <laughs> <laughs> it was I actually I really that, clear. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and absolutely everything on their screen is, you know, you can see and everything is, you know, logged where they visit. So they, they were aware that that was going to happen. Um, and even, you know, we obviously allowed them uh, which we weren't going to do at first, but allowed them to, to get into Teams to be able to chat with, with us. Um, and you can see all of that as well. So it's all recorded and yeah, yeah there's, there's no, yeah, well really clear. Yeah. Aye. And a $64,000 question, so to speak, how much does it cost for a, to proctor a student's exam? Kirsty, it was not in my budget, <laughs> which I'm quite glad about that, but that <laughs> might change. <laughs> um, I can't think. I think, for these set of students, it was around a figure of about seven thousand or eight thousand, if I remember rightly. And it was and this it is ring fence, just for vet nursing students at the moment. But I think management will put to review and, and and expand. But they do they charge per student per exam, or do you have a, a site license that covers as many exams as you want to do for for a certain group of students? The cost was based on the number of exams that we wanted, and then if you wanted them to do the, the review as well, yeah, I think it was about right. five, euro, five, euro, <laughs> five yeah. euros per exam, which I yeah. thought was very <laughs> cheap or efficient, um, you know, considering mm. the amount of staff time that it could have taken. So, um, right. yeah, I think I don't hog, hog the whole thing, just one other no, question. No, no. Um, so, there's obviously lots and lots of information being recorded for each student. Um, did, they, did someone, did the system flag issue, uh, if I understand correctly, does, uh, you set parameters and then you looked at the ones where your parameters had been um, gone over or crossed over or whatever you want to, but you didn't review, didn't sit down and look at each single student. Um, and they have they a did. team of team of reviewers and so they have an uh, experienced panel of reviewers that review each video um, and give you a report of any kind of um, incidents that they think that they'll um, rag rate it so they have a, a, a rating if they think there's there's things that look off on it and therefore you, we as the, the subject experts or the, the ones responsible for it can then go in and review that video. Yeah, can review, yeah. Yeah. But could you go into any one you wanted to just out of if you if you yeah. had concerns, yeah, okay, yeah, absolutely, oh. everything's open to us. So through that back office area, we can go in, yeah. and it even helped if the student had had um, maybe problems or um, there was there was something odd about that we experienced. There's one of the exams has got two different options, um, and for each of the parts, they'd gone into. You know, they're, they're supposed to look in the proctor exam instructions and then click on the, the link for the particular option that they chose and this student had gone into both options and immediately we were like, that doesn't look right and that's what we could see in Moodle uh. but Moodle didn't give you the detail of exactly what the process had been you know wait, what had they done where had they gone at what times whereas we could go back into the proctor exam see exactly what had happened on screen yeah. and see actually no there was nothing to worry about she hadn't gone in and, and cheated and saw more information she had just looked at the, the initial instructions, but without the proctor exam, we probably would have had to have questioned her quite a bit more um, and been a bit more suspicious maybe, but actually we, we could have a quick five minute review of that video and see exactly what they'd done. Yeah. We have time for um, just one more uh, question yeah. uh, from Tracy, who typed into the chat earlier. So Tracy, if you want to unmute yourself. Hi, um, I'm Tracy Wilkinson from the University of Glasgow. Um, I work in the Moodle team, so a systems development manager. Um, so I, I was just curious on the, the timeline from actually starting this initiative to actually delivering the exams, obviously very short, but I'm just again curious to know how long, how many people were involved, because obviously a massive achievement in a very short space of time. Yeah. I'm assuming. After hours as well, incidentally. Just, you've just reminded me I need to toil for that actually. <laughs> I, I think key people were probably from the, the the development side probably one key person probably spent over a week I would think in helping the quizzes get set up obviously Got the lectures it. were there to yeah. to then um, do the kind of 
check from the, the lecture of the subject specific side of things. Um, so yeah, again, that probably took everybody working backwards and forwards on that for about a week. So um, they obviously only looked at their particular modules. So um, I did I did quite a lot of work on um, quiz development um, and obviously setting up the exams as well took some time. So yeah, it was there wasn't much else getting concentrated <laughs> on for, <laughs> by anybody for a wee Leave while. space, but... Uh, yeah, yeah, but it's been it's been yeah. I mean, one thing I think obviously students are, are stressed when they're doing any type of exam, but going through this uh, procedure, the steep learning curve, and so on, even the students recognised how much work had actually went into this initiative. And I think, and of course, they probably back me up, is that they they, they praised us for that. Yeah, and they were really concerned to start with. It was something new to them. There was something that, you know, they'd never done before. They almost probably felt a bit pushed into it because of the situation. Um, and they were dealing with, you know, other other issues external because of being in lockdown or just generally the, the challenges that they had. Um, and, you know, we did we did our best to kind of make sure that there was a lot of kind of support to the student and and prepare them for the the process and the experience itself rather and than the staff, and the staff as well Kirsty, yeah, yeah um just so that the, the students didn't see that as a barrier it wasn't a barrier to their their um their then their completion of the exams um so and it did work really really well i think the first one there was i say the couple of wrinkles and we managed to do that debrief and sort that out for the rest of the exams um and a lot of them came back and said actually once we've been through it um it you know it was it wasn't as bad as we thought and you know <laughs> it was absolutely fine doing it that way but there was a lot of anxiety about it to start with um, and i think if we were doing that from the start i think obviously you would they would know that that was the way that they were intending to, to be uh, examined from the start. We could yeah. prepare them as we went along. They were feeling a wee bit kind of compressed. So I think not only the staff kind of compression of time and getting everything set up, but just easing the students into preparing students, building them up into it, I think would be, if we had a bit more time, that would have been more pleasant. <laughs> Okay, so um, just for the purposes of those joining us in the recording, um, uh, we've just come to the end of the 30 minutes. So thank you very much for joining us. Uh, thanks to Kirsty and Ali. Uh, we thank will continue much. the conversation here. Um, so perhaps, you know, if you're able to join us for uh, another live session, uh, that would be ideal. But until then, um, just wishing you all the best and hope you stay safe. Thank you.